What's good, Anthony Cordova here, and we're back on the 58 Impala Convertible Lowrider build. We're in the final disassembly stage, and we've taken the dashboard apart, removing any accessories and wiring from the car. We've gutted the interior. We're gonna be finalizing separating the body from the frame, and removing anything that would hang up when lifting the body off the frame. Some Yahoo's decided to mount the dual exhaust hangers to the body, so that would be removed as well as the gas tank. We will also be removing the convertible top and rack, and stay tuned for some tips on removing rusted bolts, removing hard to get to trim, and a very important step that you can't miss when you're storing a convertible. If you're getting any value or entertainment from these videos, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so it tells YouTube I'm doing a good job of making these videos so I can keep bringing you videos. All right, I'm out. <laughs> So as you can see, this thing is held on with mainly staples. You gotta be really careful when you're going, when you're taking this thing apart that you don't stab yourself a million times. I got this one last padding piece that goes in here. It's got a rivet here. And then it's just glued on the front here and stapled. So I'll take that off. I got the, cut the boot off. This thing will get a brand new boot. So this window section goes up and, and, and then it has that one trim piece that comes across here and it covers the, the seam. So there's a seam here that, where the window section goes and then the rest of the top to the front. This back section is all bolted on with like 7 16 five, uh, 5 16 threads, bolts with a bracket and that holds all that the back section on. So that's why I cut it off or else I'd be under there in the trunk having to screw that in. When you, when whoever puts this back in, not me, Whoever the interior guy that puts this thing back together will have to get in there and, and screw that bracket in there to hold that piece down and make it all nice and tight. So, so yeah, pretty straightforward. And then I'll have to pull the convertible top, the actual mechanism. You can see in here, it's got these um, little nut insert things for, um, for these weather strippings under here that I'm sure will be brand new as well. So. So yeah, pretty straightforward. And then this thing will get sent to sandblast and powder coated, painted. I don't know if they sell these, these pads for the staples or not, but I'm sure they do, or we can find some to put in there, but um, probably put some of these, especially on this back one, because it has so many, so many staples in here from, from, the, from the seam and then from, from the other trim that goes across to cover the seam. So I have to pull all these out and see what it looks like. It might be savable, but I don't know yet. That's what the, the top looks like off, and that's how you get it off. If you're gonna replace it, just cut it off. It's a lot faster instead of trying to unbolt everything and then staple everything nice and neat. These things are a one-time deal. So yeah, that's what it looks like without the top on. So I'll wait till I get the rack off to get to that, that little section right there. And that, all the staples are off. You can see right there, let this thing focus. I got these little rivets out. Got to kind of grind those down a little bit and get the rest of that out. But other than that, the only other thing is the front of this, there's, there's some staples under there. This convertible rack is ready to come off. Pulled that tack strip from behind here. There's all the screws for that. So that just gets screwed in with that, that one bracket that has a tack strip on the back. So this thing's ready to come out.
is take these rubbers out, take the strikers out for the latches and pull the trim off. Window regulators are out. I'll show you real quick. For the quarter windows, you can get to the get to the nuts a lot easier. Unfortunately, that's the only way unless you're just gonna fight those the um, tracks in there for the quarter windows. Um, I've done it before, like so you don't have to disassemble on that 57 I did. I did a red 57 convertible and I ended up just scraping my arms up and getting in there and taking taking the little nuts off the off the trim clips or whatever but it's a pain in the butt so this is really and then when you, you got to remember when you put this thing back together after it's painted and everything when you get that when you go to put that trim on put all the trim on first before you put the windows back in and put all the regulators and the tracks back in for those rear windows but yeah it's coming along the doors are off and stripped fenders are all stripped got to take that rear bumper apart I'm not sure if we're gonna get the, the bump the chrome is pretty good on this thing so I'm not sure if we're gonna re chrome bumpers and all that but that's up to the owner but I gotta get the uh, fifth wheel tray out of there that holds the fifth wheel fifth wheels up there all the parts for it I still got to go through and have everything in piles of which which goes where so I'm gonna go through and get some bags and label everything and itemize everything so that way we can get we're able to put this thing back together there's the glass and then there's the there's the doors. The only thing I gotta do is strip this this one aluminum piece off of there, and then take the weather strip. But these are th these things are stripped down to but nothing. There's no regulators or anything in them, so ready to go to blast. And then we'll get this thing back and start the bodywork on it. But so far so good. It's just an old car, and they got rust, and just the way it is. So we got all the moldings on the passenger side off except for this top this top piece of bright work right here that goes all the way around and ends over here and then the other piece joins on this and then goes around that this piece here goes around and like this and then goes around and and um, finishes off over here on the side of the quarter panel pretty straightforward not not too hard the only two that are really really tough to get out are there was one right here a little nut and I'm not sure if these originally had nuts or there was like a clip style on these that are way in here because there's no access to them. Oh, there's only this hole right here and it completely misses um, the location. But it's like way over here and this hole would be around right here and it completely misses the location because you hit uh, and, this, and the bolt go over here. So, so yeah, I had to reach way in there through this this little hole right here and I'm not the smallest guy. <laughs> access for the window regulator for the quarter windows. The access through there and and reach way in there and with my fingers you can see in there. Way back in there and and basically use this little handle thing, ratchet thingy, like a finger ratchet and get as much off as I if, as I could with that and then the rest I do just like the tip of my fingers reaching way in there. And now I'm gonna literally have to lay on top of the quarter panel because there's one way, way over here, right here somewhere. Let's see if I can pull it out, you can see. So it gets all the way loose until like right here. So there's another clip right here with the nut and a, a threaded nut on it. So I'm gonna have to literally lay on top of the quarter panel and reach, reach my hand all the way in through, through the um, trunk axis and try to get to that one. So that's the only other one left. Other than that, ready to come off. So one of the last things we got to do on this thing is drop the gas tank and disconnect the exhaust from somebody mounted the exhaust to the body in some spots so that's just my vent line. I already siphoned all the gas out of this thing so hopefully we only got a few gallons in there so it's not so heavy. These all get brand new so just chop those. Everything else is already disconnected. Here's the wires right here pulled out. So there's those. So all it's left to do is drop the tank down.
also have to drop some of these mounts for the exhaust and mount them to the body for some reason. Who knows why? What's good? Good morning. I'm here at my storage unit and I'm going to pick up some tools that I need for the 58. I need my impact driver and I'm just going to try to find anything else that I can bring in the car that will fit. And yeah, it kind of sucks because when I moved my, sh my shop, my last shop, I moved into the storage unit and so every time I need something, I got to get out here. It's, in, it's about... Well, it's in between where I work now and my house, so it's not that bad, but it does suck to have to stop and look for stuff because I kind of just moved out, not in a hurry, but I did move out. And you know, when you pack stuff, you, I didn't label everything. So with that being said, I have to look for stuff whenever I need it. So kind of sucks, but that's where we're at. Well, I don't know if I got my impact driver like I needed, but I did grab a bunch of stuff that I know I'm gonna need I just grabbed a bunch of boxes so hopefully it's in there I don't know I didn't see it but I looked everywhere couldn't find it so maybe I lent it out or it's in another box buried deep down inside of my storage who knows so I ended up finding my impact screwdriver it was in my freaking toolbox the whole time I swear to you I looked for it like three or four times and I could not find it for whatever reason but I was like it's got to be in there because I looked through all these boxes looked through all these boxes and I didn't see it and then I was like it's always in my toolbox why is it not there and then I ended up moving some stuff around in my box which reminds me I need a new box because mine is getting way too cramped but anyways had it the whole time so so with that being said I am going to use it to take these these bolts out that are number one Phillips head and oops and I don't know if they've ever been taken out before but ended up breaking my other screwdriver which I threw in the trash over here
Hope you don't know the way this works. It has a pivoting head, which if you turn it one way, it tightens, it goes to the right. And if you turn it the other way, which is the way we want it, it turns to the left. So put it on there, hold it firmly, and then hit it with the hammer. And it'll spin it little by little to knock out these tough screws that you can't get out with a regular screwdriver. So this is one of the most important and critical steps and that's welding a frame inside the body before you lift this body off the frame. What I'm doing here is welding a frame inside the body, welding from the A pillar to the rear wheel wells and putting an X in between and also welding a down tube from the frame to the rocker panel so that there's no flex when you go to lift this thing off the frame. There's no roof line so this is a critical step in restoring a convertible. You definitely don't want to just lift this off with no frame inside because you can definitely bend one of these convertibles and your doors won't fit right after that. So make sure you do this step if you're gonna do a convertible. Before you lift it off the frame, make sure you put a frame inside the body.